So today I want to talk to you about the masculine and feminine in dreams. And I think it's important in terms of starting that we understand that these are actually energies and we tend to name things and sort of make them absolutes, but they really are energetic forces in us, in all of us, um, masculine and feminine energy. So with that idea, um, let's look at the origin of what we're all calling the patriarchy. Um, back in about 1884, uh, Friedrich Engels, who was a contemporary of Marx, and when Marx died, he basically collected his papers and um, organized them and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he wrote a few things on uh, himself, one of which was a pamphlet called The Origin of the Family. And I read it a long time ago, but basically what it said is this, the greatest revolution in the history of the world took place before we had a written language. It was in the hunter-gatherer period of human existence. And if you looked at a tribe or a band of people in those days, you would find that women tended to live together in some sort of structure and that the men were basically charged with going out and doing the hunting and the gathering you knew in those cultures who your mother was. You didn't know who your father was. And the female of the organization really was the container of power. Because not only with some momentary help from the man did she create and nurture life, but she also basically nurtured the entire community, all the women did. Um, and that was sort of central to the whole human existence. So what happened? Well, what Engels tells us is that as we moved into an agrarian society, it became pretty clear that labor was important because you know, one man could only cultivate so much land, but if he knew who his kids were, then he could enlist them as they grew up in cultivating that land and expand the amount of land he could have. So all of a sudden, it became very important in those cultures to know who your father was, less so your mother. Now, women, this, this is a revolution that has happened over 6,000 years, right? And there's been ups and downs to it. But mostly what the last 6,000 years has been about is repressing, repressing the power of women. And in doing so, inherently, the power of the feminine. So that's sort of an economic explanation of how we got to where we got. Uh, it's an interesting one. It's provocative. There is also, in a more modern time, in the early stages of psychology, what were Freud and Janet and their contemporaries dealing with? Well, you find that there is this diagnosis of hysteria. That was a big category of people who were involved in um, the analytic process. Well. I can't imagine, and I don't know of a case of a man who suffered from hysteria. It was women who were suffering from hysteria and were involved in this process to try and understand what that was all about. So you have to look at that in the modern era, era and say, okay, <clears throat> why were women looked at as hysterical? Well, because we had moved pretty rapidly in the last 120 years or so, where men are not entitled to the emotional range that they had been entitled to as, as um, short a time ago as Lincoln, right? You read Lincoln's letters, Lincoln letters to, to male friends, and they're very emotive. But we had moved away from that. We got into the Victorian era. We got into this idea that men actually ran stuff. I mean, they always had, but now it got very complicated. We built things, we created things, and even when women made contributions, as we have discovered in you know, the work that's done on World War II and even in our space program, nobody knows who those women are because the structure was set up in a way to make sure that they were not put forward you know, in power. Now that's obviously changing and it's changing a lot and it's changing pretty rapidly. And <clears throat> one of the things that I'm noticing um, is that it's manifesting in dreams. So. A lot of you probably heard me say, look, there is cognition and there is imagination, okay? And we can see it sort of on some kind of 
a linear concept. When you're asleep, your imagination is active and not bounded by your ego. And when you're awake, your cognition and ego are kind of in charge. And the whole idea about working with your dreams is to get a conversation between those two aspects of your experience, because they're both you, right? We need to take it a step farther and say that without the container of your imagination, without the, the feminine container of that energy, that creative nurturing energy, your cognition runs amok. I mean, just look around. Do we have fantastic, incredible inventions? Absolutely we do. And we're gonna use some of that technology in this time that we're in, because I'm recording this at the beginning stages of this global pandemic that we're all involved in. However, we can also see that a lot of those creations were made with absolutely no regard for what would happen as we made them. How we would take materials out of the earth, how we would basically force child labor to produce it, and all those things we all know about, right? Why? Because it's not the container of the feminine. And what I'm saying here is not, you know, oh, it'll be all great when women come to power to be perfect. It'll be a process, most definitely, because women coming into power are coming into the power of the container created by the patriarchy. So there's a lot of work to do to change that. And a lot of that work is gonna become evident given the times we're living in, because a lot of the structures that have been created through cognition are not gonna, are not gonna survive, or they're certainly not gonna function while we shut down whole parts of our culture. So what's happening? Well, first of all, a lot of the dreams that women are bringing to me uh, have to do with goddesses. And sometimes the goddesses are pretty pissed off. Sometimes the goddesses are in the face of the women that are bringing them, basically saying, you got to pay attention to this part of who you are. Now is the time. And what that means is, <clears throat> is taking a hold of your own sovereignty and your own power and not giving it up. It's not a question of taking it from somebody else. It's a question of not giving it up. It is you. Okay, so that's one set of dreams. Men, interestingly enough, are bringing dreams where there are catastrophes. And interestingly enough, at the end of the dream, there's an understanding or an awareness that it doesn't really matter. Now, what does doesn't really matter mean? There are a lot of things that matter. The, ma the health of our kids and our, our spouses and our family and our communities, that matters. What doesn't matter so much are all the constructs that we have created around it. Now, <clears throat> you can go on the internet these days and you can get all sorts of people pontificating about the financial structure and the market and all this kind of stuff. It's all up here. And the problem that I think we're gonna see is that this is not gonna be particularly useful from a personal perspective. I'm not talking about the scientists and the doctors, they're essential. And, you know, there are basic things that we can and all should be doing. But we're not going to figure our way back to the place that we were in. This is too big. The structures that have, you know, we've been propping up for a while are going to fall. Chaos is sometimes a real opportunity. And it's going to give us all the opportunity to really find that energy that we call feminine in ourselves, that nurturing energy, that caring energy, that, that energy that wants everything and everyone to be taken care of, to be sustained. Um, and what becomes important is not that that overwhelms the masculine, but that the masculine becomes in the service of the feminine. Just like I always try to say to you, your cognition should be in the service of your imagination. Okay, not the other way around. Because actually everything you do and everything you create is your imagination. So <clears throat> basically what I wanna say in this video is that we would probably do well to not label things so much and just have the experience of what it feels like for many of us to be in our homes for an extended period of time, either alone, or with the people that we love and work on and think about how to make that work. 
and I would suggest to you, quite frankly, to uh, limit yourself in terms of tuning into cable news <clears throat> um, twice a day. Stuff's going to happen whether you hear about it or not. And it's better to kind of get it all at the end of the day or get it at the beginning of the day and then wash it out of your mind and be with people you love and do things that you have never allowed yourself to do. And I'm talking about doing a drawing on a piece of paper if you've never drawn anything. Allow that part of you, allow that creative aspect of you, allow that part of you that wants to create some kind of an emotional container that will get you through this. And not just through this, but really ground you for the rest of your life. So I hope that was useful. Stay safe. Do the simple things that people ask you to do, that the health department tells you to do. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.